Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over the vehicle meta changes in the most recent update. And as you can see, this post is very long and detailed, so it seems like it's going to be a very big video. And I'm going to get started right now. Now, according to the meta changes, it seems like the A10 only got a buff in its movement speed, but actually there's been a silent update where the handling has been fixed. And if you've used the A10 in the past, you'll know that the handling was nerfed in one of the other updates, and recently it's been reverted. So now this is still probably one of the best ground attacking vehicles there are. It has a lot of HP, and the cannon is also still very powerful. However, if you want to counter this, you can just use pretty much any other air vehicle to take this down. This seems to lose very quickly to the Spitfire, and honestly, you should only be using this to attack ground targets with it. Now, onto the blackout. In the change log, it lists only one change, a rocket speed increase, but there's actually another silent update. If you fly your helicopter in advanced mode, your helicopter becomes extra sensitive to anything. Any explosion is going to knock your helicopter around. Shotguns are going to be able to blast your helicopter away. This vehicle is now a joke in advanced mode, so you better fly in basic mode. This vehicle is really only good for taking down slower aircraft and giving friends the lock-on jammer glitch. Moving on to the buzzard, it got massive buffs. It got a damage, lock-on range, and reload increase. And it does 160 damage to aircraft in a single shot. This is insane. Even though the missile is pretty slow, it's still very powerful and accurate. If you want to counter it, the only way you can do it is just by treating it like any missile vehicle. Just stay out of its lock-on range, field of view, get lock-on jammer glitch, or just get into cover. Stinger is also a really good option against this. The Cobra is losing its place in the meta. It's hard to hit its missiles against fast cars or smart drivers, and to use its full potential, you need a second person as a gunner. The X-10 can do the exact same as this, except solo. The Cobra's only upside is its increased health, but with so many other aircraft, it's hardly my first choice anymore since it can't even attack air targets or even water targets. You may have seen massive changes to the Cyberplane in the update, and that's true. Its missiles have the same DPS as the Warhawk missiles, which is really good, and other buffs all around. But don't let this fool you into thinking that the vehicle is good. When you try to turn this jet, your plane will try to level out, ruining its turning radius and handling. It's impossible to aim the bombs because of this, and it's not even the fastest aircraft anymore, not to mention that the stealth can't help against stingers or incinerators. You can think of this as just a mix between the Warhawk, Falcon, and Nighthawk. To counter it, just use any fast missile or aircraft and you'll easily win. The Edge Runner got the HP buff we were all asking for. Unfortunately, some of the problems that existed before were not fixed. It seems to be having some hit registration problems, whether or not it's zero damage explosions or no explosions at all, it's been a big problem. It also doesn't have nearly good handling. But it is still one of the best free roam mini tanks, because you can use your drive-by weapons with it, and explosive turret just adds some more DPS to that. To counter this vehicle, just aim for the very exposed tires while in a fast car. Alternatively, you can just use drive-by 3-in-1 inside of a SWAT. Even though you may be excited about the Falcon changes, don't use it. Its acceleration makes it hard to aim the bombs, it's so high that you can't really bomb accurately. And also, it's a sitting duck to anything with missiles or flight, so just don't use this vehicle. You will have noticed that the hyperglider got a massive nerf. Its HP was reduced to 200. This means that you can easily take it down with a single stinger shot. Because of this, its missiles are no longer that OP as long as you have a stinger on you, so this is why I always carry a stinger. This vehicle is pretty much only good for grinding in solo servers now. The incinerator is still the ideal anti-aircraft. If you get it into a good position, then you can take down any aircraft in the game. Not even the Raptor can escape its missiles. Countering it is pretty easy. Just use small arms fire. Watch out though, because the operator may jump out and fire back at you. I recommend the Knight Rider for this job. The Marauder definitely dominates naval warfare. Its turret is very powerful and the only real counter is by using tiny vehicles like the Halo to destroy it. Honestly, I just ignore it because what is it going to do in a dogfight or a bank? It just stays on the water and doesn't do much else. 
The most interesting thing with the Knight Rider in this update is that it got AoE damage. This means that you can now do extra damage to vehicles while also dealing damage to people with their heads sticking out. This effectively prevents people in cars from firing back at you without risking their health. Not to mention that this turret is already an insane tank killer, it also got an HP buff. This vehicle can easily destroy an edge runner at long range, especially with drive by 1 and 3, and at close range it still stands a decent chance against the edge runner. Countering this vehicle is now very difficult because its turret is so powerful and because of the HP buff. The edge runner is still going to be your best bet because it's easily respawnable and can knock the Knight Rider around. You just have to play smart with it. The comment has actually not been changed in this most recent update, but I still wanted to talk about it. The comment is unique in that you can use all your weapons in it, but to be fair, you can also use drive-by glitch in every other vehicle. And this comment also has a few problems. You sometimes hit yourself with the stinger, and also the buzzards, missiles, and every other missile in the game was pretty much buffed. So now the comment isn't as effective as it was before. The only real use for this aircraft is taking out slower jets. Even though the Nighthawk was buffed in the changelog, it still isn't good. Its bomb is likely glitched, so don't expect to do any damage with it. Also, its missile, its speed, and its turning radius isn't good either. And even though the Nighthawk has stealth, it just takes too long to recharge, and any Warhawk can chase it down anyway. I don't recommend this vehicle. The Terminator is also a very good mini tank, but it is one that requires two people. With the recent missile buffs and especially the Knight Rider AoE change, you better start running once you see any of these because they can easily take out your gunner, leaving you defenseless. Not to mention that the Knight Rider can actually even out DPS the Terminator. The F-22 Raptor is currently the most OP dogfighter in my opinion. It is extremely fast, meaning that it can outrun all cannon aircraft. It has stealth, meaning that it can sneak up on all aircraft, even if they have missiles. It has high HP, meaning that it can tank many shots. It has good handling, which means that it's very good against regular jets in a turn battle. And finally, its missiles were buffed recently so that you can basically instantly take down any aircraft very quickly, provided that you hit your burst as well. The only real way to counter this aircraft is by either using a Stinger P1G1 or by using a Lock-On Jammer vehicle or the Incinerator. Those are the only ways that you can really counter this vehicle. The Rhino can now do 320 damage to vehicles, meaning it can also instantly destroy a hyperglider, but it still remains the same mostly. It's just a really good free roam tank. It's still very easily countered by aircraft or flying targets, such as the X-10. The X-10 really does well against it. The Warhawk has the single best missile in the game. It does 180 damage to aircraft and 60 damage to players, with a decent cooldown time. Its lock-on range was increased as well as having a decrease in the lock-on time. This makes it pretty much a budget raptor with nearly the same dogfighting capabilities. I highly recommend that you get this vehicle if you can't afford the raptor because its missile is absolutely insane. It's such a good free roam jet. It should be counterable with the Sting or vehicles such as the Spitfire or the X-10. Finally, I'll end off on a comparison between the Spitfire and the X-10. The Spitfire is better in basic mode and the X-10 is better flown in advanced. For weaponry against other aircraft, the Spitfire is better because of the bullets it shoots, instead of the projectiles that the X-10 shoots. The X-10 you actually have to lead the shots a bit. However, in terms of handling, the X-10 absolutely dominates. It can make zero speed turns, meaning that you, you can always aim on someone's aircraft with this vehicle, and also it makes it very effective against ground targets, even if they're in fast moving cars. This vehicle is just insanely good for that. It does get countered easily with some missile vehicles, especially helicopters and stingers, but this is by far one of the best slow speed dogfighters in the game, if not the best. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you actually watched until the end, I just wanted to let you know that there's a secret playlist on my channel. I highly recommend that you check it out, and I will see you guys later.